Um, <clears throat> we're now going to begin our conference sessions in earnest. Again, this is an opportunity to dialogue, exchange thoughts and ideas on how we are implementing LOIC and other standards to drive change. Our conference in Annecy, France, as pictured here, was exceptionally productive, encouraging, and engaging. And we know uh, this conference will be as well. Um, we're going to kick this session off by hearing from none other than Dr. Clem McDonald. Well, Dr. Clem McDonald, as you know, Dr. McDonald is the principal founder of LOIC and his dedication, innovation, and hands-on contributions have helped develop and continually improve healthcare informatics. Today, Dr. McDonald is going to provide a 20-year update on LOIC as a universal standard for test orders and observations. And Dr. McDonald, the floor is yours. All right. Well, you know, this is a, a sort of a, an unexpected thing. When we started this in 1994, that there would actually be an official meeting at it. We used to have small meetings at Big Sky. And I think Jim Case and Stan, a couple other people were there. And um, it got really cold in Big Sky. I remember one day this guy flew in from Italy. And he turned around and said, I want to go back. I, he couldn't take the cold. It was 40 degrees below zero in this, the one of our meetings. But anyway, on to, um, on to, the, on to the talk. Let's see. Uh, oh, there it is. So why I got involved with standards. So as an intern at Boston City Hospital, we took a huge amount of time organizing data, you know, so, for, to figure out what's going on with the patient. So I dreamed of the time when... Uh, all we needed for clinical data, we just breathe it in, we can get it. Uh, so I started building a electronic medical record to help with that in 1972. And building the system was the easy part. Getting the data in was a tough part. Always, always is. So uh, we started with 6,000 patients and um, used screen scraping, uh, fake outputs, and a whole bunch of things to get the data started. Uh, we did get an EMR working and showed the computer reminders for health care. This is, um, however, the approach wasn't sustainable. The few two interfaces we had were fragile and they broke. The manual labor became crushing as we expanded to all the patients in our institution. This is Mission Hospital in Indianapolis. So we desperately needed standards so that the computer could just read it in with the data. We started to lobby for them. And in 1981, I wrote a paper, which should be more like grocers. The grocers, I think, were very inventive. They, made, they invented barcodes before they had any way to use them. And they put the barcodes on all their cans, or their vegetables, or whatever else they had. And uh, but So we, took a, we should have taken a lesson to them. So I wrote a paper in 1981 saying we should be more like the grocers. Uh, but um, we didn't become more like grocers. The big journals all rejected it. No one believed computers would be used in practice, but finally we did get it published. Um, now, success with standards links within hospitals <clears throat> occurred first. Lobbying didn't help. So we decided to do it ourselves. We drafted a draft, draft standard at Scamsey in 1984, and out of the panel came an invitation to develop clinical message standards and ASTM, which is uh, a large standards organization dealing mostly with materials. Uh, we use the work with ASTM to provide the clinical messaging components for that what became HL7 standard, or v which is everywhere. The um, expansion of the latency medical record to include all the hospitals in our city and then uh, would not have been possible without these standards. I mean, you just couldn't go around you know, picking up the papers and typing them in. Um, let's see. Uh, it says, sorry about that. Uh, so some technical background. So there's some differences between the standard st structures that people think about. And I think it's important to distinguish those as, you, as we go on. 
So most people picture data as a flat structure, one record per patient, or visit one column per variable. Uh, the, and we go to the green font, and the values are red. That's how a lot of people think of it. But most medical record systems use what I call a stack structure. So there's a record per value, and and it's you can't contain the patient ID, a code for the, for the test, etc. Uh, now the key difference in a flat structure, uh, a spreadsheet has a name, which is the classic flat structure of a spreadsheet, has a name for the variable as simple text in the column heading, no code, no formal definition, no ability to pull data from different spreadsheets. The stacked structure includes a code for the observation record. The code comes to a separate master file that defines and provides other information about that variable. Now, different data sets can share the same master file, and in theory, the data from different sets can be merged together. So, okay. So this is an example. U, U, U2 HL7 is a stack structure. So you got a record for, for value, and there's a place in that record for the code, for the value, for the instant measure, et cetera. Um, the key to interoperable measurements and test results is you got to have a code, a standard code for the structured observations, because otherwise you, you no one knows what's going on. Now, uh, without standard codes for observation, it you know it becomes it, it's like filing papers in a shoebox just for just for later years. I guess those are shoebox. Uh, now, when we have standard codes for test results, what each of a kind of test can be grouped together uh, and, and in time order for a flow sheet or in statistical aggregations. So there's representing those little slots that represent that. HL7 V2 did not work well across institutions. It, you know, it was used in institutions and successfully so because each institution invented its own idiosyncratic codes and they didn't match up or link up at all. Uh, so what we invented, initiated LOINC as a universal lingo franca. Now this was a group of, of geeks who, uh, I guess, 95 or 96, some of them, some of them are in this room, uh, cooked up this thing to have a universal code. Um, so the earliest one, a little bit of a timeline, uh, pre loink <clears throat> we wrote the paper about about the grocers, which would be more like grocers. Um, and then 1994, uh, we had our first meeting to discuss how we might create something that would become link. In the second meeting, we decided it would become link. I don't think it we got, I don't know when we got the name though. Uh, Betsy Humphreys criticized the name, says it sounds like oink, like a pig or something. So we named the pig the mascot for one as a result of that. Uh, <clears throat> so it, in, in 95, one 1.0 was released, but it contained 6,000 laboratory tests, just laboratory at the beginning. Um, in 90, uh, so in 90, 95 to 2000, the, the, the original article describing the standard uh, as a one database was published. In clinical chemistry. In 1999, HL7 identified one as the primary, the preferred code for uh, laboratory, te laboratory test names, I think for all observations eventually in communication between health providers, producers, data producers, and data users. And the point or like the, obtained a internet domain uh, registered in 2000. Um, <clears throat> In 2011, it reached 11,000 registered users, and we reduced some. We introduced something called Realma uh, 6.0, which is still there. I think you heard about it from some of the latest developers, <clears throat> but I I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I think the way to use the web web uh, the web version of it is much easier, prettier, nicer, um, <clears throat> and. Uh, I don't know if you all care about a link OI, but we got the link OI in 2013. And in 20, and we also 
to get together with RSNA, that's the Radiology Society, to to make to unify radiology codes with across Hamilton and Warner. Um, so 2014-2017, uh, we started the one premium men's membership, but I don't like to brag about that. And Gilbert Hill and Cindy John, Johns were named the inaugural recipients of the Lunch Award. Both of these people are since deceased. The wonderful out here. Some of you guys know them. They really were, were, were the finest of all people. And then in 2017, uh, ICC announced a livid a specification for digital publication of mapping between lung and vendor internal codes, insulin internal codes. And I think you saw something about that earlier. Um, and 20, 20, so 2017, one of these 50,000 registered users, uh, 2017, the first one conference, now, uh, Event comprising workshop that's ever one committee meetings. Now, this is sort of the grand day of the of the one meetings. Um, and then in 2018, we announced one announced a new terminal terminology service API using HL75 to kind of take over the world. Um, and then in 2020, we hit 100,000 registered users, and 2021, version two of the search one web app was released. And that's beautiful. I've got to compliment the the, the uh, cooks uh, that were built that system. And I think they were, are they here today? Stephen. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. In 2017, we had 50,000 users. And I'm going to And then uh, 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 100,000 link orders are recent. 2023, uh, recently, just 15 August. So, this is a right time. Now, tools for using light. Um, <laughs> so, there's a thing called a fire questionnaire. And that is a resource in FIRE for those that are uh, familiar with FIRE. Uh, <clears throat> and we built, uh, actually NLM built tools uh, to specifically work with this resource. So LHC Form Builder is a tool for authoring forms. And it's really pretty slick. And you can get at it if you want to get at it through the, the link. Uh, and then LHC, LHC Fire Path is an XML-like field extractor, tree navigator, and calculation tool, which is like XPath for those of you who are, you know, are geeks. Um, then there's tools for help coding to USDI standards. Now, USDI is the federal, the US federal uh, specification of code system that should be used in the US. And uh, so amongst those tools, there's a UCOM validator and unit converter. So UCOM is a universal standard for units of measure, and it's, it's computable. So that's kind of cute, cool. You can use tools that, because of the structure of the UCOM string to convert between units. Um, I'm working on a validator for local codes for like uh, also, and there's an HGS, HGDS validator if anyone needs it. Now, FIRE defines function as well as data structure. FIRE actually is very, pretty cool for those. Who's familiar with FIRE? Everybody? I'm not quite familiar with it. No. Well, FIRE is really an interesting thing. It's got a bootstrap that defines itself and then it defines all these other things. And uh, it's, it's sort of taken over the world. I mean, um, and it's really handy because you can make up many cool names if you want FIRE in the in the um, so the, the the fire has a questionnaire for structured data capture, uh, and and it specifies the attributes needed to fully describe and perform. So this is a specification, not an application. But we have created a JavaScript tool that actually does it and generates a live tool on the fly from a description. And I think 
from that link you can get it if you want it it'll capture data store it into a fire server and retrieve it for editing now we've also developed several javascript tools um and uh, what we've implemented is open source it's available on github it supports nesting the form supports nesting skip logic then input validation pre-population from dhr from the polar data uh attachments and more you should try it those of you who are geeks i don't know how many people are geeks here? Uh, not a lot <laughs> well, well congratulations join the week to geek club um it's 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 um it supports the mechanism for editing storing and retrieving the questionnaires from fire servers as fire smart apps try it it's on fire svc smart app it is specified as a tool to use in the fire social determinants of, of health implementation guide uh, it's it, it, all one panels about 2000 of them are automatically also fire questionnaires that is it they can they can automatically convert into live questionnaires uh lac forms builder is our form for authoring uh questionnaires it's, and it's really it's very very pretty so those of you who are in the business of making questionnaires you should try it um okay. now this is um this it, it, it allows pre-population that is you can actually fetch specific data from a fire electronic record and plug it into the form and then the form can be the editor or left as they are um, this is an example of showing um, data that might be pulled from a clinical trial you want to get all the all the tests that might reflect toxicity of some kind uh, and the user can accept them or change them at will. Um, the PH29 depression survey, people are familiar with that, is a very uh, a very commonly used survey for depression. And and um, and this is a, a, a form in the same tool that, that, that allows one to have to do the questions, and you have multiple choice answers, you pick them, and at the end, it'll summarize and add up the total score. Is it's a scoring uh, questionnaire. Um, now, FirePath JS. Um, a FirePath is analogous to XPath. I don't know who knows what XPath is. It, uh, there's, there's, there's some knowledge of both there. So, XPath is a very broad tool used in general in, in, in software. The FirePath is specific uh, to healthcare kind of stuff. Um, and we have an implementation. Uh, of FirePath, we NLM uh, of, of Worcester Hill, and it's been popular. Popular, it's been downloaded seventy-six thousand times. Um, the following form, I think I'll show you in a minute, uh, asks for data to calculate the framing handlers score and uses FirePath to calculate. Framing handlers tells you, you know, what are you gonna buy? Well, not exactly. It, it sort of says. What's your risk of cardiovascular disease uh, uh, in the next 10 years? Uh, it, it, it does the calculation and inserts it automatically as an answer in the questionnaire in the form. Let's see if we got here. That's, that's the form. That's the form. This is a um, one of the standard fire questionnaire forms. And what you do is you, you have the questions that are necessary to compute what you're trying to do like in this case the frame hand with the purpose of a heart attack I think in the next 10 years and so about the age or gender uh, do you smoke um systolic blood pressure uh cholesterol uh, and, and two different measurements of cholesterol and um, are you using medication for high blood pressure and then uh, all answers are required to uh, get the probability so this particular case the probability for this set of of answer is very well, 0.0%. If you have a heart attack in the next 10 years. Um, so, <clears throat> so, Alan um, has developed, or Mr. Hill 
at the validators for some code systems. So it offers a validator, it's a web-based API and downloadable software for you, your code. So it will validate this, this string and create a valid Yukon code. Um, and Yukon is a syntax, so a validator is, is important and useful. The same program will also convert values between commensurate units of measure. So between pounds and kilograms, for example. The, this API is popular now, or 220, it's actually a half a billion times the now, the most recent access to it. And, and the software has been downloaded some large number. I've got that, 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 that on. Uh, the Newcomb website is on this slide if you want to try it. Okay. Now, so Newcomb, uh, Newcomb is a big success. It's been adopted by all, and I should, Gunther Shadow is the primary inventor of Yukon. Basically, uh, he's a, a German open commerce user. Uh, or he's actually a US citizen now. It's adopted by all health data standards as the unit of measure. IEEE, ISO 112240 for the units of medicine, uh, I mean, medicine, medicinal units, ASO 7 Fire, CEA 82. DICOM, which are imaging standards. Uh, the Yukon specification is available in this link. Uh, <clears throat> so Yukon accommodates metrics, for example, milligrams, US English conventional, ounces, ounces, I think in things like fathoms and those kind of fine ranges as well. Uh, it addresses almost, oh, it says it, almost every unit of measure, fathoms, knots, trams, Things we probably never, never will use, as well as physical dimensions of time, distance, volume, mass, moles, electrical and magnetic force, radioactive, optical, auditory, phenomena, and more. It's a syntax that accommodates all algebraic combinations of atomic base units, say milligrams per 24 hour year or light years. Um, so, Yukon is a syntax, not an enumerated list. Uh, dot and Yukon signifies multiplication. So M dot S is milligrams, uh, milligram seconds. The slash signifies division. For example, milligrams for 24 hours. The star followed by digits indicates exponentiation. The usual uh, version is case sensitive. Uh, there are also case sensitive versions that they're not used much. Metric, metric units are directly recognizable in Yukon as a gram, they're the same as they are everywhere else in the world. Metric prefixes, uh, is centa for 70, k for kilo, are all fully supported. Conventional US and British units have special forms. Uh, for example, international pounds, they score back as LB underscore Abagadio. Abagadio must be an important guy who's in a lot of these things. Um, conventional units, um, special units, for example, pH, are also uh, available and they are distinguished from being surrounded by square brackets. So you don't be confused or anything else. Um, so, molar versus mass units are measured. Molar units count the number of molecules of a given chemical or entity per unit volume. Mass units Count the amount of mass of a chemi given chemical per unit volume. And the Yukon converter can convert mass to molar and back if the user provides them also a way. And now, um, this, the Yukon thing is built on a set of tables, and these underpin the computability of Yukon. So each base Yukon is associated with a vector. With con conversion factors that indicate form based to reported units. Values can be converted from one commensurate Yukon unit. Uh, you can't convert in units of different dimensions, however, pounds to feet, for example, for obvious reasons. A few units have special built in functions to achieve the conversions. Um, so, on our Yukon page, um, this is is uh, bombarded, I think I mentioned, I think it's a half a billion times a year for present time. Uh, and the 
this provides conversions and, and the like. So <clears throat> now some background on the Ukram uh, validator and converter. Ukram is the computer we use, as I mentioned, um, and people can, you can convert one Ukram into another if they're commensurate. It has a well-developed, uh, I don't know what that means. It has two flavors. Oh, a web-based system that can validate or convert what users enter on a web page, or they can submit as a CSV file and batch. So there's also a web service API developed by Joseph Eriks from Vienna and served up by our NLM server. Server. Both systems have similar capabilities. The NLM based API is now being accessed at a rate of 1.2 billion times a year. So I think it's popular. Either that or we got some friends pumping up. Uh, you can more. LHC provides a web page for validating and explaining you can learn streams and for unit conversions. You can try it and you can just click on this and an API that both validates and, and converts. Um, so the, the software for validating and converting Ucom has been downloaded from GitHub 159,000 times last year. And the API is, is in, I, I already mentioned it, annually about half a billion times a year. Um, so Blank and Ucom are sort of paired. So Ucom is, um, in a one table, you can the units are measured will usually be you can. Um, so, um, so, so look, there's a tool that will present if you type in something, it will present alternatives to what you really mean in you can. So, if you, you can validate unit expression one at a time. Uh, if you type in all the propounding, they'll actually ask you which one you want. There's more than one. There's a big pound, there's a, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not the mind for you. Uh, uh, and there's an international pound, and I think there's a US pound. So this thing will kind of help you sort through that. Uh, <clears throat> it, the conversion of value expresses millimeters per hour per milliliter to its values and units per milliliter, the universal standard. So these are uh, enzyme units. So most people may not be terribly familiar with them. Um, LHC's human validator uh, also has been a big success. It's been, oh, the converter is access VA high about 9 million times per month, or I guess I run it 10 million times per month. The software for the web version has been down at 11,000 times. Uh, and that doesn't mean that all downloads have implemented, but it's a huge number, even if only 5% of them did. Uh, so the web system for validating converting is at this website, and the library, if you want to do it yourself, is also downloadable from that GitHub at that website. And the library supports validating validation of human expression, conversion of values between different unit expressions, batch or online one at a time entry, and the one at a time entry expands the Ucom strings that are close to the entered string to make sure that you can pick, you can then pick the one you really want. Um, HDS, HDVS gallery. So HDVS is the human, uh, from a, it's, it's a genetic code system. Uh, human, who knows that, what it stands for? Uh, uh, not a genetic audience. Uh, so it, an example of HDVS is this string in the second line, mm underscore zero one one two nine blah blah blah, and it goes on. Um, the string up to the colon identifies the reference sequence, and the rest indicates a deletion of part of the DNA. It's based on a combination of, so we created the HCBS validator, which is based on a combination of a tool from NCBI, the sentence I utilized it, which is in a little spot right there. Um, so that's that's all I really have today. Uh, but I, I appreciate 
And I appreciate that Ben, a lot more, you know, we were just a bunch of dudes uh, about 20 years ago, uh, mainly in small, small groups, often in the big sky, uh, which kept us in working together because it's too cold to go out and do anything else. That was <laughs> Jim was there, right? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, any questions with all that? So I want to thank uh, Dr. McDonald and Ms. Clem for the wonderful presentation and giving us a history that brought us to where we are now. So thank you very much for that.